Hi, and welcome to Navigate Autism with Jane Lynn. I'm your host, Jane Lynn Britton. And for those of you who are joining me for the first time, I am excited that you decided to tune in because I am a mom of a 16-year-old child with autism, and I have a lot of experience, as you can imagine, that I am so interested in sharing with you. About 10 years ago, I quit my job in corporate to homeschool my son with autism, and I learned so many amazing things. I learned a lot about myself and him, and I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to share a lot of the adventures and the learnings that we have gained so that hopefully it would help you in some way. So that's why I'm here. And today, I'm really excited to share with you something that really has changed my life. And that is something that gave me more time, peace of mind, some freedom to do the things that I want to do, as well as finding great people to be friends with my son. And I didn't know how important that was for me until I started bringing that into my life. And you can probably imagine, you're a parent or you're a caregiver of a child with autism and you're doing so many things. You are taking your child to doctors and therapists, to school, to IEP meetings. You're also taking care of your siblings, your other children who are siblings to your child. You're taking care of the family. You're working. There's so much that you're doing, and you're probably overwhelmed, much like I was, and stressed and tired. And maybe even finding yourself saying no when a friend says, let's go out for a cup of coffee. And what happens is we start to give up a little bit of ourselves every day, and then we start to get sick and tired and sometimes regretful. When I started to make time for myself, I felt so much better. I was able to get healthier, be calmer. I saw my son respond more positive to, to me, more positively to me, and I saw my whole life and my family change. But the best part was I started to build a network with people who I could trust to watch my child. And you know that's not an easy thing to do. When you have a child and you're looking for a babysitter, for instance, you want to find someone that is really knowledgeable, loving, and caring, and that you can trust. And that's hard enough, but then you add on to it the layer of autism. And you want to find someone who can respond correctly and carefully when your child does something that is unexpected, like running across the street or possibly hitting, or biting, or screaming. But you also want someone who isn't just a babysitter, someone who inspires your child to learn, to try new things, to go on outings. So how do you do that? Sounds exciting, right? I'm very, very excited to introduce you to someone that I met four years ago and who has become a really good friend. His name is Nico Antonellos. And he created a company called Sidekicks Support Services. Now, he is in New Jersey, and he services all of New Jersey. But if you're not in this state, stay tuned, because I'm going to ask Nico his secret later for how he finds the most amazing, and I mean perfect, people to hang out with our children. So I'm really excited to introduce you to and to welcome Nico. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. I'm oh, glad you're this here. This is great. This is great. Oh. I have had the pleasure of working with many of Nico's sidekicks because for me I find it's really important to introduce my son to as many different people as possible so that he learns different ideas, different ways of doing things, and that he has more friends. And as I've met each one, I really have been amazed at how they connected instantly with William 
at how they brought different ideas, always had a game in mind, and how William has grown over the last four years just by knowing them and interacting with them. But there's another thing I wanted to share with you. It's really the peace of mind factor. I will never forget I had a conflict one day and I really wanted to spend time with my daughter at her school, but William had a baseball game. He plays baseball for special needs and he loves that. And I wanted to be in both places, but I couldn't. And so I asked Nico, could I have a sidekick come and take William to the game? And he said, of course. So we arranged it where someone came, we knew him, picked William up, drove him to the game, played with him, helped him as his buddy, and drove him home. And the whole time that was happening, I had peace of mind. I knew William was in good hands, that he would have fun, and if anything happened, the sidekick could handle it. So that when I was with my daughter, we had a fabulous time, and everything just flowed perfectly. There was no one else that I could have called. I don't have family in the area. And I was able to have both of my children t take care of their activities and have fun while I had fun and peace of mind. And so for all of these reasons, I really wanted to share with you Nico and his amazing company. <laughs> so thank you again for joining me. Thank you again for having me, Jane Lynn. I appreciate it. It's so good to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. Great to see you too. Thank you. I would love for you to share with our viewers just what inspired you to create Sidekick Support Services and why you chose the name Sidekicks? Yeah, sure. So, you know, what inspired me really was when my mom was, uh, my mom's a, a paraprofessional at, at, a, at a, you know, school and she, she works with individuals with autism. And, you know, one day she said to me, both parents can't attend the parent-teacher conference and, and how difficult it was. And then how parents can't go out for a night or, or do things on their own because, you know, caring for an individual with autism, you know, is, is it takes someone with certain skill set, you know, patience, understanding, you know, knowledge, empathy, you know, you know willingness to, you know, make a difference. And um, those types of individuals, you know, are, are, are tough to find. So in the back of my mind, I, I kind of was like, well, wait, you know, what if there was something out there that connected families with people who, you know, were willing to make a difference, people who were empathetic and understanding. And, um, so, you know, I was in school and I was thought about my cousins with autism growing up and, you know, how oftentimes they never had mentors, companions, people to look up to. And, and also, you know, I very much value relationships, you know, um, even like the little relationships that we have. People, we all need people that help you along the way. And for individuals with disabilities, I, I believe it's tough for them to find, you know, outlets like that, people to look up to. And it's tough for parents. And so that's why I created Sidekicks, you know. And I, I, I think um, a lot of individuals with disabilities, you know, are, are looked in a certain light to where you know, they can't achieve certain things or they can't prove people wrong and they can't do certain things. And, you know, I, I, I think that's that's wrong. And I, I, I think they are superheroes for the things they overcome every day, you know, the, the battles they overcome and, you know, and they are superheroes and every superhero needs a sidekick, you know. So we're just trying to put our superheroes in the limelight and give them individuals who can help them grow and do fun things and at the same time like you said earlier give parents that peace of mind that's that's so important in our lives for a lot of reasons so that's really what inspired me to give families sidekicks to create sidekicks um, and why you know every superhero needs a sidekick I love that and it's so true <laughs> and and I love it because of what it means to you and what it means to me but because I know you I know you live that yeah. And it, it's not just words, it's, it's from your heart and it's your passion and it's what you do. Yeah. And I think that's why you find such great people, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but I, would you explain, we talked a little bit about how they you know, provide support, parents can go out, but what are some of the specific services that you provide for the families? Sure. So we provide mentorship companionship services where we have, you know, some of our staff who 
you know, have or are pursuing a degree, mostly pursuing a degree in the field of special education, social work, humanities. Um, and these are just buddies, you know, who, who hang out with, with individuals with disabilities or superheroes and do all sorts of different things, whether it's going out to the community, doing activities at home. Um, really, our, our program is flexible and, cap and geared towards what the family and individuals are looking for. Uh, we have ABA therapy services as well. You know, we have individual support services, which is a, it's called ISS services, which is a program run through uh, Medicaid and the New Jersey Department of Children and Families. And we also have our adult services, you know, community-based supports, you know, job coaching, job training, uh, career planning. And, you know, those are services for individuals 21 and over. And, you know, those are just some, those are the services that we provide. And, but it's all geared towards giving individuals you know, a support outlet that they can depend upon and trust and help them grow and do fun stuff. And, you know, what's better than that? So. <laughs> right. Well, you, you do so much, really. You really cover it all. And I know, uh, and you, you said this, and I, I really love this about you. You said, we'll, we'll help you do whatever you need. I mean, I'm not sure there's probably a scope or um, boundaries with there, within there. But anybody who's come to work with us, I've been able to train them and kind of say, this is how we work with William. And this is what motivates him, and this is what doesn't work. And they've always been so open and receptive to that, which makes it easier to connect and be successful in our family. So we really appreciate that about you. And, and just hearing all the things that you offer, it really is an amazing service. It's well, very diverse. Yeah, You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Talk a little bit, if you don't mind, this is your secret. Um, <laughs> and I've, I said earlier that every single person we've met has just been amazing. And they're unique in their own way because of their individuality. Mm -hmm. But we, I think I've had at least 15 psychics work with us, probably more mm -hmm. <laughs> over the last four years. How do you find these people? And, and yes, in New Jersey, but we also have people outside of New Jersey watching as well as from other countries. So is there like a secret that anybody watching could use now? Yeah, sure. So. I think the biggest things to me are reliability and patience and understanding. So, you know, when anyone that you're looking for, I think those are three things that are, are, are important to keep an mm -hmm. eye out for. And, you know, w with reliability, you know, if you're looking through, you know, job sites or put a job out at or wherever it is, you know, and, and that person it's tough to schedule or doesn't show up or, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of a red flag right off the bat, you know. Um, understanding, you know, one of the first things I ask people is why do you want to work with psychics? Why, what do you want to get out of some experience like this? I, I look for people who really want to, you know, grow in this field, gain more experience, um, you know, learn from our team learn from our superheroes. So if I don't hear anything like that, you know, I, I kind of take an extra second to think about, is this person a good fit? And, and you know, patience too. You, you know, with patience, it's, you have to kind of see what they've done in the past. You know, when they, when they are introduced to a new family, are they understanding that it takes two or three, four times to build the relationship and understanding and you know being able to work with a family like you said and, and you know so I, I think those are really three things that are important when looking for someone to be that sidekick so to speak for your individual with with disabilities and you know so it's I don't think it's really a secret <laughs> you know I, I I also think too you, you know is one day I'll have kids and if this would I trust this person with, with my kids one day, very simply mm -hmm. like that, you know, too. So it's, um, it, those are just really, yeah, really three things that I look for. And That's great. I love all of them, and I especially love the one where you said, will they love to learn from your, this child? Yeah. Because they are our teachers Yeah. every day. And, and if we have that symbiotic relationship, it's just going to grow stronger, and that connection is going to be stronger, and we'll really both be successful. Yeah, right? and, and just to touch on that real quick too, Jane Lynn, you know, if it's something that you love, it's something that you love doing, and it's something that you're passionate about, no matter what, you're going to excel. 
you know, if you work hard and, and keep going at it. And I, I love the staff that we bring in because like, oh, I, we did this today and we did that today and I'm learning so much. And, you know, I see them glowing and growing and, you know, and then they become teachers and now we're four years into it. So some of the people we start in the beginning are teachers and it's just, it's just great to see. But the biggest thing is just that passion and that energy. And if you can, it's kind of a kind of a gut feeling that you have to, you know, have, but you know, it's, it's really important. Mm -hmm. That's great. So those are some great qualities. I think part of your secret is also where you find them. So could you talk a little bit about where you start to look for these people? Sure. So uh, really, I started out at the schools, the local universities. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's a good place to, to really look for, um, you know, individuals. There's other sites like care.com. Uh, you know, there's agencies just like, like mine out there who can help you, you know, find, you know, certain individuals too. So that's definitely a good place place to start for sure. Do you post any ads anywhere? Like, I know for a while I was posting on Craigslist. I actually found some great people to, to work with us on Craigslist. I was just curious if you use any of those sites. Yeah, no, nah, I, 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 don't, I don't use any of those, those sites really. I've had... Um, you know, been fortunate to find some great people from the schools and, you know, from other sites um, like that too. But, you know, really, I just kind of stick with that. Yeah. Well, I think that is one of your one of your main secrets is, and after having talked to many of your psychics who were students studying to work in some way with special needs, they really loved having that experience that hands-on experience sure. and then take that back to the classroom, bring what they've learned into the home. Yeah. And it, it, as you said, they were really passionate about it and couldn't wait to, to describe it. And then they became teachers and were able to spread it even further throughout the world. So let me ask you one thing. Uh, because one of our biggest fears as, as a parent is our children's behavior is so unpredictable. They're wonderful, they're loving, they're kind but sometimes something irritates them and we don't always know what it is. Mm -hmm. And they might behave in a way that we sometimes call aggressive. And our biggest fear is who can handle that? Like how, how do your psychics train to handle those kind of behaviors? Well, first, you know, that first meeting that we have with the family is very important. You know, we're not just going to send someone in blind and say, you know, good luck to everybody. It doesn't work like that. You know, we, we, we get an idea of what a family is looking for. You know, are there behaviors? If so, you know, what leads up to before it? How do you usually tr handle it, you know, during it? And what do we do after? And, you know, how can we improve or work on these behaviors, you know, in or in the home around the community? So we like to think of our parents as part of our team. You know, we, we our families know their individual best. So, you know, our, our, our supervisors or our intake team, whoever, meet with the family, get a good idea of what they're looking for. And then, you know, we go back and work with our sidekicks. And, you know, first we'll select a sidekick who, you know, let's just say the, the individual or a superhero has had some behaviors in the past, you know, aggressive behaviors. You know, we look mm -hmm. for people who had had that kind of experience in the past first, mm -hmm. you know. And then, you know, we would make them well aware and kind of, you know, give them, you know, information about that we gather from the family. So that way they're prepared in, you know, working with the individual. So that's a big part of training the individual, making more personalized. And, you know, so I would say really just having staff who have that ha had that past experience, getting some information ahead of time. Right. And, um, you know, that's important as well. We also do have some trainings as well. Uh, we do very basic ABA trainings, you know, uh, positive behavior supports, um, cultural competence, mm -hmm. abuse and neglect, uh, just to name a couple, so. Wonderful. Yeah. That is great. So there's a lot that you, I can, I know, because I can see when they come into my home and I meet them out sometimes at your annual picnic. <laughs> so they're, they're very, very well trained and competent and, and know so many wonderful things to do with our kids. I mentioned that one of the biggest things for me was peace of mind and having 
time for myself. What are some of the other comments you get from parents as to what this has really done for them? Yeah, so a, a lot of it is 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 that you know I I have families who haven't gone out in like over ten years. You oh know, yeah. And, and now <laughs> I understand. <laughs> you know they they have <laughs> someone who they can t trust to mm -hmm. go out and do that. You know the growth in the individuals. You know when sometimes you know we may help with an individual a superhero putting them on a routine you know whether mm -hmm. it's before school or after school or um, you know redirecting individuals towards other activities when you know a behavior is is coming or something like that you know I, I think a lot of our families appreciate our willingness to be flexible and communicate and you know really work with families on the goal of you know whatever the superhero and the family is looking for so right. those are things that families give feedback on and some things i take great pride in too wonderful so. you should you yeah. should there's a lot of you you do so much and 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 all those things really are important to us and the the relief we get and the help and being able to go out for the first time <laughs> after 10 years that was us for a while so i can really appreciate that and I know there are going to be families watching who would love to contact you. Um, what's the best way for them to find out if Psychic Support Services is for them? Absolutely. Well, I, I, I would welcome people to check out our website at SidekicksSupport.com. That's okay. Sidekicks, plural, support.com. Okay. Uh, there's a Let's Get Started button right on there. You know, I invite you to take a look at our website, read all of our information. And, you know, families think it's a good fit for them. You know, they can get click the let's get started button and you know we follow up right after that and we send out one of our we'll give you a call get an idea of what you're looking for we'll send out one of our supervisors or intake coordinators out to get a chance to meet you and your needs and you know then we would you know go to our sidekicks database and um, find out who would be a good fit from our team and introduce you to that sidekick and then you know we go from there and it's Really, our, our program is catered toward what a family and individuals are looking for. So, um, yeah, I definitely invite Perfect. anybody to check out our website. Again, that's sidekicksupport.com. And what are the hours and days of the week? So, uh, during the week, we have normal, regular business hours, uh, but we do provide our services mm -hmm. mornings, afternoons, weekends. We also do overnights, you know, um, during the day. You know, for our individuals who, um, you know, are older individuals who are not necessarily in school. So, really, we try and accommodate our families as, as much as possible. There's really no limits to what we can do in terms of hours. So, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. So, I hope that uh, many of you have learned a lot, and hopefully, you will check out Nico's website, psychicsupport.com. And uh, thank you for joining. We're going to ask you to stay. I'm going to ask you to stay just for right. a few more minutes because one of the things that I like to do is to share information on like just some, some fun activities that you can do with your child right now. And the one I chose for today is using your creativity. And it may or may not work for your child depending on uh, what level you feel they are. But it's definitely something that I've done with some psychics. And something that I do with people who work with my son. And it's called Pass the Prop. I learned this from the Sunrise Program. So Nico and I are going to stand up and show you a few things and how to do this that you can do at home. All right. So Nico, if you don't mind handing me. Sure. One, getting two of those, please. And we'll show okay. whichever one you want. Um, I'm going to take this one. This one. Oh, and okay. We got three. All right. That's okay. good. But okay. hopefully we'll have time for all of them. So. I like to use things around the house because it is easier, it's more practical, you don't have to worry about going and buying things and uh, you can do it very quickly that way. But as I said, it's called Pass the Prop and what I like to do is inspire creativity in myself and others because it helps my child. And so what this means is usually you have a bag of, of things in it and let's say you're having Maybe you can do it one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes I have a team of people who work with us, and I bring them all together, and we do this together. You could actually do with this with your sidekicks yeah. if you wanted to, <laughs> right? <laughs> so 
just take one thing out of the bag and find a different way to use it. So of course this is a spatula that I grabbed from the kitchen. You could use it as a fly swatter yeah. and go around the room and swat things or swat yourself. And then you hand it to the next person. So Nico, what would you do with a fly swatter? Oh, I was thinking it was more of a back scratcher. Yeah. I love that. Uh, a back scratcher. A back scratcher. <laughs> see? Very clever. All right, so then you, you pass it around and you see all the different things you can come up with. And what is next? I'll let you start this one. Um, so this is, you know, I haven't had a chance to look at my hair today. This is a nice <laughs> little mirror here that we got going on. I love it. Yeah. What, what That's a think? mirror. So instead of a magnifying glass, Nico uses it as a mirror. I'm going to use it as a banjo. Oh, cool. Right? All so right. you can play music because my son <laughs> loves music. So we would walk around the house maybe making a little band, and this is my banjo. Yeah, and to keep that going, Jane, this is a little drum that we got here. Yeah. You know, uh, a little drum. That's right. My drum. I love Drumstick. that. Drumstick. There we go. Look, you're already <laughs> into it. I love him. He's so creative. <laughs> and I, the reason I, I brought tape, and uh, this is fun duct tape because you can buy it in all kinds of patterns and pictures and this is the minions i don't know if you can actually see it the minions but i create all kinds of fun things with this because it is, makes a loud noise right and you can make it really big and i'll even use it in some ways to say to my son to get him to participate because you know he's a teenager and sometimes he doesn't want to sure. so i'll be like hold this pull i need help and he pulls really hard and i'll go like all the way across the room with it doesn't matter what i'm making just so i'm getting him involved that is fun so that that's one way <laughs> but that's kind of an aside yeah. i'll tear it off right now um i was actually going to use it as a bracelet oh okay you know so you could you could like, put several on and decorate yourself or i could use it as a hat okay do you think yeah, I think I have. Yeah, looking good. All right, Nico, what would you do? Now, I haven't had breakfast today, so I was going to use this as kind of like it looks like a donut or <gasps> a bagel. Yes, you know? I like so, it. That's what I was thinking. You know, I'm not going to take a bite out of it. You know, so. <laughs> You'll wait till later. <laughs> I'll wait till later. For awesome, that. thank so, you. But when I do, I'm going to have to, you know, brush my teeth after, you know. You're so creative. <laughs> I knew I choose, chose the right game for you. <laughs> this is wonderful. So this is an activity, again, just grab things around the house. You can do it with your child. You can do it with someone you're trying to just inspire their creativity, as well as your own, just to get you ready to interact and participate and do fun things. So thank you, Nico, for thank joining. You. Thank I you really, for having me. This was fun. This, this was fun. This was fun. And I really appreciate you sharing your gifts with our audience and really the world. And it means so much to me, and it means a lot to everyone else. I appreciate that. Of course, anytime. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. You're going to be inspired because you're going to get to meet my daughter, who's going to talk to us about siblings. As you know, our, our other children are very important to the growth and development of our children with autism, as well as important to our family as a whole unit. So we're going to talk really in deep and honestly about sibling relationships. And until then, I wish you all well. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you next time on Navigate Autism with Jane Lynn.